everybody. It's me, Jason Dorchinski, and I'm driving through the inside of the Lane Motor Museum in a 1975 Mini Comtesse. Hey kids. That is a driving right here. This is a 1975 Acoma Mini Comtesse. It's a fascinating little car built in France as part of their sans permis movement, which was a set of regulations that would let pretty much anybody, and I mean pretty much anybody, drive a car. You could be 14 and drive one of these. You could be drunk and have tons of DUIs and drive one of these. You could be a drunk 14-year-old whose plans include a lifetime of alcoholism and know you can always drive one of these sans permis cars. Now the reason the French made this law was to allow more mopeds, really. Because if you look at all the restrictions placed on these cars, this category, they could only be 50 cc's in power and engine size, and you had to be able to power them with your foot as well. You had to pedal them, which everybody in the government thought, that's gonna mean mopeds. What they didn't count on, though, was ingenious drunk French engineers who figured out how to take the requirements of a moped and somehow expand it into one of these insane, austere little cars. That's actually why I'm wearing this ridiculous jumpsuit. I'm wearing it because I felt it was the closest analog to what this car is conceptually. There's nothing to tuck in, it's easy to move around in, it covers you, it can be warm or cool, you can unzip it or zip it. It just makes a lot of logical sense. But when you wear it in the real world, you look a little bit like an idiot. And that's kind of what happened here. So your interior construction, of course, is very porta potty like. Same materials, same stuffy feeling inside. If you habitually urinate on the seat, it'll be no different at all from being in a drivable porta potty. You've got a very basic dashboard. You've got a little steering wheel here. You got a little seat that's a lot like a bit of lawn furniture. It flips forward, and there's storage back here. Actually, a little more than you'd think to put a big chunk of cheese or bread or whatever the hell else you want. There's a little speedometer here that goes up to 60 miles an hour, and that right there might be the most beautiful bit of symbology of the incredible optimism of the human spirit. The only way this thing is going 60 miles an hour is if a truck comes up behind you and knocks it like a cue ball somewhere. All right, we're here on the real road, and I've got it floored, <laughs> I'm not, I'm doing maybe 10. This thing is not quick. Let's take our little turn here. There we go, yeah. The steering feet is remarkably direct, like insanely direct, because you're basically, you've got a chain drive from this wheel to the engine unit, which is kind of mounted on the front wheel. We're about to go up a hill here. Oh my God. Floored up. This is a mild hill. Oh, wait. I felt that gear kick down. Oh, now I'm tearing ass. That squirrel can barely keep up out there. He's breathing hard. Yeah, eat it, squirrel. All right, now I'm going downhill, leaning into the turns, letting those third and uh, fourth and fifth wheels do their job. Although, as these cars pass you, it is a little alarming. A GMC Yukon just went by, and I swear all I saw were wheel lug nuts zipping by. And of course, there's no seat belt in this thing because I think they made a decision, like either spend the money for a seat belt or just have the front and rear bumpers serve as pallbearer handles and you can just get buried in this and just skip the middle man entirely. Because if anything hits you with this, you may as well just call it. Just, you know, you're done. Just bury you right in the Mini Comtesse. Give it a spray paint of maybe gold paint. Oh, wow. Oh, God. Oh, wow. Railroad tracks are no joke at this thing. I'm not sure what they're using for suspension. In my head, based on the way it feels, I'm imagining like three canned hams are the things that are absorbing the shock. That's kind of what it feels like. Oh, crap! Holy... Wow! That was uh, exciting. Man, my whole body is slick with sweat. Of course, I also was the idiot who decided to make an interesting point by wearing this ridiculous jumpsuit. And now I'm being punished for my hubris and thinking that point was even remotely worth making. Because now it's just become like a... Oh, crap. Oh, I've, I've stalled. Come on, Comtessa. Comtessa. Are you honking at me? Really? I could use the pedal. 
Oh, God. Oh. All right, that pedal's a joke. Well, I was trying to go up this hill, and the Comtesse decided she'd had enough, and she stopped, and I can't start her again. And in an act of beautiful optimism, I tried to use the pedal, and <laughs> it was uh, not happening. Come on, start. Yeah! Uh. Uh, oh my god! Oh, that was, that was the most terrified I've been at two miles an hour. I like how every time I come to the lane, I find a new way to be terrified going so freaking slowly. So after uh, spending some time with the Mini Comtesse, I've come to realize the Mini Comtesse represents what's available to you car-wise when you are completely out of options. There's something to be said for looking at your worst possible outcome right in its yellow headlights and trying to come to grips with what that means. And now that I've done it, I think I'm okay with it. It's terrible in a lot of ways, yes. It's hot inside like the stinkiest of miserable porta johns yes. But it's still a car. So if this is the worst that can possibly happen to me, bring it on. The road and this car talk like a pair of, of we all good? One or two things that talk an awful lot. What do you tow this thing away with? Kid on a big wheel? Now it's them. Those two things, two.